Somebody today, it's gonna work in your face. 
loses everything. Every hour I need Oh, bless me now,
just follow him for it. You made all things new. You made all things. I'm a new creature in him. You made all things new. I'll follow you for
I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the land of the living. My Bible tells me that the dead can praise the Lord. I said the grave can't praise him. But I will lift up my eyes, hallelujah, until the hills from which cover my help. Because <laughs> I know my help comes from the Lord. Oh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Oh, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you.
praising God. When you have somebody that's leading you and can set the example, we don't mind Father, Father, because we know just like our steps have been ordered, his steps have been ordered, hallelujah. So we invite you, we invite you into this place. You're watching us virtually, but whenever you get an opportunity, we welcome you to 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland. Somebody say Clinton, Maryland. I know you're out there and you feel the presence of the Lord, hallelujah. You feel the presence of the Lord, but it's something about it being in the presence of his people. There's something about when we all get together. What a time, what a time. I said when we all get together, we can have a time in the Lord, hallelujah. So we invite you into this place to worship with us, to experience what we feel and hear, hallelujah. Because how many know the Holy Ghost, it runs from heart to heart and breast to breast. And you can't sit down on God if he's been good to you. And I believe he's been good to everybody in here. I believe he's been good to everybody in here. I didn't see anybody coming in with a stretcher. I didn't see anybody had a respirator hooked up to him. I didn't see anybody that had a cane or a walking stick. And we can all open up our mouths and give him praise. Hallelujah. We may not have everything that we want. But how many know we got what we need? Hallelujah. I said we got what we need. And what we need is Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. And he says if I'm for you, I'm more than the world against you. Hallelujah. So we bless his name. Y'all better stop this week. Hallelujah. I feel something today. I feel something today. Hallelujah. I feel something today. Hallelujah. I feel something and it's the presence of the Lord. 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 Taking a backseat to the Father, letting His will be done in our lives. Amen. Amen. We're going to go on. We're going to go on. But we bless God today. Put your hands together one more time for the presence of the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. I don't know about you. But I just bless God today because our God, He's still on the throne. <laughs> I say, Our God, it's He and He alone that's still on the throne. He's still on the throne, and he's got all power in his hand, and he's in control of everything. I said he's in control of everything. Even out there, what you're going through, God is still in control. He's still in control, and all you got to do is let him be God in your life. And I'm so glad that he will show up and show up. Somebody say show up and show up. neighbor says good seeing you I'm glad to see you hallelujah it's been all a whole week y'all but we're here not because we crossed every T not because we dotted every I but the goodness of the Lord hallelujah the Bible says the goodness of the Lord shall draw men unto repentance it's his grace and his mercy that keeps us up it's not because the doctor gave me the okay it's not because all of my bills have been paid it's not because I don't have any worries or concern but I've learned to put my trust in Jesus. And when you put your trust in him, he'll make everything all right. Everything all right. We're moving right along, hallelujah. This is the point in service where everybody can give God some praise. We praise him with our hands. We praise him with our mouths. Now we want to bless the Lord with our substance, hallelujah. Here at Face to Face Worship Center, we believe in giving unto the Lord. And how many know this is good ground? This is good ground, hallelujah. This is good ground. And I've come to understand that when I bless God, you can't be God-given. I said, you cannot be the Father in your giving. Because the more you try, hallelujah, the more he just shows you what he's able to do. And the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, running over. Somebody say running over. That means your blessings overtake you. How many would love to be in that situation when your blessings not only catch up to you, but they overtake you? Hallelujah. And we are living examples. 
say, we're living examples. I'm looking at some blessed folk. You're looking at some blessed folk. Out there, you're blessed. Hallelujah. The mere fact that you're able to wake up every morning, you're blessed. And so we thank God. And if you don't mind, would you stand to your feet? Would you stand to your feet? There's several ways we give here at Face to Face Worship Center. It's offering time here at Face to Face Worship Center. As you prepare your offering, please join us in making this declaration over your finances. The declaration will also be scrolling across your screen. Now repeat after me. I walk in financial abundance. God supplies all of my needs, not half of them, but all of them. Satan, take your hands off my finances. Finances. I command you to be loosed from the world system. Because I give tithes and offerings, I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. There are several ways to give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App, there's a dollar sign, F2FWC, our website at F2FWC.org and click the donate link or you can text F2FWCGIVE to 1-888-364-4483 and give your offering there. Father, we thank you for the generous giving of these, your people. We pray according to Luke 6 and 38. As your people give, give back unto them. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give back unto them. May this be their season for a financial windfall. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you stand to your feet? I need you to point to him and say, preach the word. Preach the word. Mr. Street of Pastor Vincent Fro. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice. I honor the Lord today for being here. I, I bless him for his traveling mercies. Been out all week traveling. Got home Friday night. And I said, Lord, I got to hear from you. Because you know, when, when, when you're moving about your week, and I don't know about you, but I look at the surrounding and I look at different situations and I'm always asking God, Lord, speak to me. Share something with me. And the whole week, God gave me nothing. I said, now, Lord, you know, I don't like being in that position. But the other night, the Lord gave me a dream. And I heard God speak to me in this dream. And I want to share with you what God has placed on my heart. Now, my plan, my goal is not to be before you long. But I must give you what thus said the Lord. Before I go any further, as I stated, I give honor to God. I give honor to my pastor, Pastor Anthony Xavier Page. And I ain't going to tell his business, but he finally caught up with me as far as age. And he always says to me, you older than me, but only by a few months. But I bless God for my pastor and I thank you for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk and share with the people of God what the Lord has given unto us. To all of you in your respective places. I bless God for every last one of you. 
It was good to walk into my home church today. I haven't been here in about a month. And for those of you that don't know it, the Lord blessed me and I, I'm in my house. I'm in my house. So I got boxes everywhere. And I'm getting to the point now that when I open up a box, I almost act like it's Christmas. Ooh! Pots! Ooh! Towels! But I'm thanking the Lord and I'm just going to take my time and unpack and, you know, I ain't worried about it. And I'm in there now. So we'll let do, we'll let it do as the young folks say. We let it do what it do. Amen. Amen. If you would, if you would stand with me, and we're going to pray, and we're going to go into the word of God. Don't get nervous. I know you see all these pages. Don't get nervous. I just want to share with you what the Lord gave me, and I promise you, I'm going to sit down. But let's pray. Father, we're thankful today for your mercy and your goodness. We thank you that we're able to come in your presence and we're able to give to the people of God what you've given unto us. No goodness of our own. But it is by the grace of God that we stand. Now we ask that you would bless your word. Let the hearers be blessed by what you have deposited in our spirit. Be glorified, O oh God, in all that we say and do. And we'll give you praise. And we'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before you take your seat, all throughout the service, I'm listening to the praise and I'm listening to the songs. And I don't know if y'all heard it, but there was a theme that ran through every song. And I said, Lord, I don't believe this, but you are confirming my message. And the dream that I had the other night in this dream, I was talking about, and I was talking to someone about the love of God. Amen. And if you heard the different song, mm -hmm. she's talking about love and love and love and love. Mm -hmm. And so my topic today is the love of God. All right. All right. My subtopic, if I were to use that, my subtopic is entitled by this. Now, I don't normally wear this thing, and I'm warning y'all now, if I get too hot, I'm coming out of it. But I got tired of sweating out my suits, ruining my suits. Because when you're up here, first of all, you're nervous. Ah, glory to God. Then your body's perspiring. So I said, Lord, I'm going to put this clergy jacket on, is what they call it. I'm going to put this on. But again, I'm telling y'all now, if I get too hot, I'm going to come clean up out of it. Amen, amen, amen. But look at your neighbor and say to them, the love of God. And then say to them, by this. Hallelujah to God. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Our scripture for today is coming out of St. John. Chapter 13, verse 35. Very familiar passage of scripture. Now, I'm going to ask y'all today if you would help me preach or help me teach or help me do what the Lord has placed on our hearts to do. St. John chapter 13, verse 35. The Bible reads like this, and I'm reading out of the King James Version. By this shall all men know 
that we, that ye, that us, that usins, yeah. however you want to say it, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have love one to another. My God. And I tell you, over the past few weeks and past few months, I have been burdened. I mean, weighed down in my spirit, just heavy, about the condition of the church of the living God. And one of the things that has burdened me and one of the things that I see escaping or leaving or, or getting away from the body of Christ is the love of God. Now, not only the love of God, but also love one for another. It bothers me when you hear the world and you hear about people in the world that love one another more than they do in the church of the living God. The world, they can club together, they can party together, they can drink together. And then one thing also that they can even fall out. But they still go go out clubbing and drinking together. And whereas we in the church, if we fall out, we done. It's over with. I ain't going back. I'm not going to pray no more. I'm not going to read my Bible no more. And we fall out of love. Not only with God, but also with one another. And the Lord dealt with me as I shared with you my dream the other night. And I was ministering to talk someone. And I was talking to them about the love of God. And up until yesterday, I had nothing but the dream. And I said, Lord, you got to give me more than just this dream. And yesterday as I was at home, pastor called me and he was encouraging me. And he said, I know you got a word. And I didn't want to bust his bubble and I didn't want to break his heart and say, no, I don't. <laughs> but something happened very unique yesterday. And I'm telling you, saints of God, I'm learning with God. Everything that happens in your life, don't ever neglect even the course of your day. Everything that happens in our life, God is in it. Glory to God. So, since I didn't get a word from the Lord or didn't have, didn't have anything at the time, I said, well, Lord, you know me. I'm going to try to do a little work. I'm going to try to do a little work. So, I fired up my computer, my work computer. And when I fired up my work computer, I could not get to my email. Wow. And I said, Lord, what in the world is going on? And I come to find out from some co-workers that the IT department, the computer people, had shut the system down and they were working in the background. And the Lord began to speak to me. Ah, glory be to God. While I was in front of the computer, and the Lord said, you were not able to get to your email because you could not be authenticated. Oh, wow. oh, come on now. Glory be to God. And I want to talk to you today about the love of God. And I'm going to find out today through the preaching of his word if you are authentic or if you are an imposter. Glory be to God. The Lord began to deal with me about authentication. And authentication is something that they're using in the computer world. And one of the reasons and one of the purposes of authentication is they have to make sure that the person that's sitting behind that computer is who you see. 
say you are. Glory be to God. Hallelujah to God. And if you have ever had a work computer, or if you have ever got onto a computer, or if you've ever got, tried to get into your email, there's certain ways now that they have to authenticate you. And one of the ways that they authenticate you is something called two-way authentication. And in the two-way authentication, there are common ways to validate you as a user. Number one, they ask you to put in your password. Glory to God. And another way that you can be authenticated is you have to use your fingerprint. Glory to God. Many of y'all got these cell phones. And you can either do it, I, I see people do it, do it design on your phone and you hit certain numbers or you put your imprint and your phone will open up. Or you can do voice activation. And the last way that the Lord brought in my mind that they authenticate you is that Nowadays, the bank, the, the, the Amazon, different ones, they're sending you a verification code. You got to put that code in the system to authenticate you. And the Lord dealt with me, and after some time, I was able to get into my email. And the Lord said to me that because earlier, because the computer system was down, no matter how much you used your password, because you were not authenticated, I could not get into my email. And the Lord said, this is the problem with the body of Christ. A whole lot of folk are identified as Christians. But how many of us are authentic? Now, let me share with you the difference between authentication versus identification. When you are identified, it is an act of indicating that that person is who they say they are. But authentication is when after you have been validated, then you are considered real and genuine. Okay. Help me here today, Holy Ghost. Everybody is claiming to be Christians. Everybody is identifying themselves as a Christian. So my question to you today, are you authentic? Are you real? Are you genuine or are you an imposter? I had an experience today as I landed in DCA and a Lyft driver picked me up. And the Lyft driver, we got to talking and found out he was a believer. We got to talking and talking and that man don't know it, but he was blessing me because he shared with me that there are certain processes that have to occur to become a Lyft or Uber driver. Watch this now. Just because you want to be a Lyft or Uber driver, you just can't jump in your car and start picking up folk. But you got to go through a process. And the process that he had to go through that he was sharing with me was to, number one, identify who he was. And so he was sharing with me, and I was taking some mental notes, that for him to be validated as a Lyft driver, he has to provide a valid driver's license. Not only that, but he has to do a background check. And then after the background check, they have to go through drug testing. And they got to make sure that the person is who they say they are. And in addition to going through all the process, he said the car has to
to look a certain way. The car has to be in a certain condition. And he said, you got to be careful because he said, the problem with the church is just like an Uber or Lyft car. It looks good on the outside. But he said, but until you allow them to pop the hood and take a deep dive into the engine. He said, then you are not validated. You are not considered an official Uber or Lyft driver. Because he said they have to check the engine. They got to check the transmission. And then after that, they have to pass some safety checks. They have to make sure that the car not only is in good condition, but the engine is good. But also, he said, you got to make sure, click them, that seatbelt works. Glory to God. And I said, Lord, what are you saying to the people of God? A lot of us as church folk, we look good on the outside. We look holy on the outside. We going through the motions on the outside. But oh, I want God to pop the hood of your heart. And let God take a deep dive and see what's on the inside. And many of us, ha, hallelujah, as the driver begins to share with me, the last thing that he has to do before they are authenticated, glory to God, is you got to have some insurance. You can't drive without no insurance. And I'm here to tell you people of God, God is looking for some authentic believers that will believe him and that will trust him. People of God, I'm burdened and I'm, I'm heavy in my heart because the, the, the church seems to be going through, uh, I, I can't even explain it, but the love of God, the Bible even said, it's, it, it'll wax cold, and yeah. it'll wax weak yeah. in the last days. And I believe with all of my heart that that's the condition, and that's the state that the world is in. And I'm sorry to tell you, but that's even the state that the church is in. We are waxing cold, not only towards our God, but also one to another. And again, as I stated, we all look good on the outside. We know how to walk the walk and talk the talk. And, ah, but the thing is, I don't want God to look at me as 1 Corinthians 13 and 1 says. And it says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, I have become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. And I know that charity and love are interchangeable. But when the scripture talks about a sounding brass and tinkling cymbal, that's a metaphor and that's basically speaking about the emptiness of speaking without love. And many folk are just doing a whole lot of, whole lot of clinging and clanging and talking about the love of God. But all at the same time, empty on the inside. I want us to realize that God wants to authenticate us. And as I stated, because I couldn't get authenticated yesterday, I couldn't get into my email. And God said, this is the condition of the church. It's because the saints, his people, his children are not authenticated and not real and not genuine. That's why many of us cannot get into the presence of God. Let me say that again. Because we have not been authenticated by God. Many of us are not able to get into the presence of the Lord. And one of the things that you have to realize is that even sometimes my computer was down yesterday and I didn't realize until I talked to some co-workers that the computer people were working in the background. And people of God, I want you to know that even in your life, and I'm talking to somebody today, that you feel like that, that your, your prayers are hitting the ceiling 
and coming back down. I'm here to tell you, don't get discouraged. Keep praying. Keep seeking the Lord because just know that God is working in the background. God is taking you through a process of preparing your life for authentication. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. Listen, without authentication, there are several things that will not happen. Number one, without his authentication, you cannot get into the presence of God. And we as God's people, in the last and evil days that we live in, it is critical, it is important that we get before the face of God. Not only get before his face, but we have to get before his presence. Listen, I saw something today that kind of grieved me in my spirit. And I saw this young lady as she was working the praise service. And it was as almost as though she was pulling to get us into the atmosphere and to the presence of the Lord. And people of God, we are assigned to do one thing. See, we think that we get into his presence when we get here to church. But see, the Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And what that means to me is that before you get here, you got to invoke the presence of God. Why you at home? Washing the dishes. Driving the car. At the laundromat. At the grocery store. There should be a praise that's welling up in your spirit. So that when you get here, all you doing is just connecting with other believers to get into the presence of the Lord. Without authentication, you and I cannot be a recipient of the blood of Jesus. Listen, we have to get to the point that when God has authenticated you, in other words, God knows that you're real and God knows that you're sincere. And I want you to know if you think I'm wrong, I'll tell you I got a Bible to back it up. The Bible said that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And God is looking for somebody that wants to worship him and wants to worship him and love him authentically. Listen, the other day as I was traveling and, and I went to go get another lift, look like I'm giving all my little money to Lyft and Uber. But anyway, that's all right. And look like when I went outside to get that lift, there was an impossible. And he said to me, you're looking for a ride? I said, are you officially through Lyft? And he dropped his head. And see, you got to be careful. Because a lot of these folk that are claiming to be Lyft and Uber drivers, this is why we got folk missing. This is why we got folk disappearing. Because you getting in the wrong car. But I'm here to tell you, but when you are authentic, you have to go through the process. And I'm here to tell you, see, some of us want to be overnight wonders in God and not wanting to go through the process. Glory be to God. And when the Uber driver told me that before you are insured, you have to make sure that the car is working. Then you got to make sure on the inside, not only that the car is clean, but the seatbelt works. And listen, I'm here to tell you, that's what's, that's what's wrong with many of us. We're in the presence of the Lord, but we're not belted in. Listen, you've got to make sure your seatbelt is in. Because when you walk with God, I've learned this. You're going to hit some rocky times. You're going to hit some tough times. You're going to hit some bumps in the road. And every now and then, you're going to hit a few potholes. But, oh, but if your seatbelt is on in God, hallelujah, you may bump and you may sway. Hallelujah, but you're secure in God. And that's the, the, the condition of the church today. A lot of people are not secure in God. They're secure in the song. They're secure in the concert. They're secure in the religious organization. But are you secure in God? 
Glory be to God. Ah, Lord Jesus, I told the Lord, Lord, I want to be authentic. I want to, you know, we used to sing an old song back in the day. Y'all know I'm a singing preacher. But, but I want to live so God can use me anytime and anywhere. Some of us are living raggedy. I'm going to say it with some emphasis. Some of us are living raggedy. Glory to God. But I want to live so that God can use me. God is looking for people that will worship him with your whole heart. The other thing that authenticates you as his child, your testimony. Your testimony is what authenticates you as his child. And the church today, we are not hearing enough of the testimony of the saints. And I know we're, we're, we're changing, the times are changing, but pastor, I'm going to confess something to you. I miss the old time testimony services. I miss the old time services where the saints used to pop up like popcorn and just talk about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah to God. But many of us, we are so caught up. Instead of sharing testimonies, we caught up in social media. We caught up in Facebook. We caught up in Twitter. We caught up in Twat. We caught up in Instagram. Twit, twat, twit, tat, dick, whatever. We're caught up in so much instead of talking to God. And we, as the people of God, when you are authenticated, and I'm almost done, when you are authenticated, you as a genuine true believer, you're not going to let nobody bring you no garbage. You're not going to let nobody bring you no lies because you are an authentic believer. People of God, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Now, I'm going to get a little pastoral here. But how can we talk about we have the love of God? We can't get along with our brothers and sisters that we see. How dare you talk about that you are an authentic believer when you cannot love the person that you see? My heart is burdened for the people of God. For the church of God. We have to get back. To the place. Where we love. And I think that. The scripture. Even talks about. That they loved so much. That they had all things come. And for months. Our pastor taught about. Kodania. About the love of God. And being in communion. But people of God, the church is in a bad state. Now, in Atlanta, I think all over the world, I ain't trying to mess with you, Beyonce. But the Beyonce concert will be sold out. But the church is of the living God are empty. Oh, God, what's wrong with this picture? What's wrong with it? Now, 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 now listen, I, I haven't heard many of you say, oh, don't you talk about Sister Beyonce. I, I ain't gonna talk about her. But she's able to draw more souls. And here it is, we have the truth of the of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't even get folk to come to church. And I'm 
talking to you out there in radio land and in TV land, social media, wherever you are. Get off that couch and go to church. We done got to the point where we done got lazy. And I know we had COVID. And no, we're not totally out of COVID. But the condition of the world is a whole lot better. But you have become lazy. And you have become with the spirit of Laodicea. And you are just sitting at home eating your oatmeal and your cereal and talking about you in church. Get to church. Get to church. The Bible says forsake. Forsake not the assembly of yourself. There's a portion of that scripture that said, especially Come on. as you see the day approaching. Oh. People of God, I'm here to tell you it's God's man. Oh. Jesus yeah. is soon to come. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is soon to come. Yeah. Glory be to God. And I want us as the people of God, saints, let's love one another. If we have a brother or sister that falls, the Bible said, ye that are strong, ye that are spiritual, ye that are authentic, bear the infirmities of the weak. And we've got to the point where church has become a social club. But I'm here to tell you that God wants the church to go back to the point where we begin to pray. We would sing hymns and we would call on his name. Hallelujah. We would come together and we would rejoice. I remember the day coming up as a young man. You would hear the saints all the way down the street. And the saints would be rejoicing. And as you were walking or riding the church, you put the pedal to the metal. You kind of step up your pace a little bit. Why? Because there was an excitement and joy to come in the house of the Lord. And I'm asking God today, Lord, bring back the love of God. Back not only into the church of God, but also bring the love of God among one another. Hallelujah, that we would love one another. People of God, we need the love of God in our lives. We need the love of God in our homes. We need the love of God in our churches. Hallelujah. Lord, I don't want to be a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal but I want God to know that I love him and that even in my failures and in my mistakes I still love him and I am determined to be persistent in my love. The problem with the church today is we fall in love and we fall out of love. When things are going good, we're in love with God. And when things go haywire, then we fall out of love. People of God, I want my love for God to be consistent. And God is looking for a consistent lover. Mm. Glory to God. And even when you're in a natural relationship, many times in the relationship you get mad at one another. And husbands and wives stop talking to each other because they're mad. Forgive me, TV land, but you mad because he left the toilet seat down. You mad because he didn't put the cat back on the toothpaste. And you don't talk to him for weeks. Oh, but saints 
presence of God. What if God got mad with us and did not talk to us? We would be in a world of trouble. But I'm glad to say today, thank you for God using you today in song. But I want the love of God to be consistent in my life. I want my love to you as my brother and sister to be consistent. I would say this. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because I'm going to love you no matter what. Because guess what? I want to make heaven. And I'm not going to let you, you and nobody else, make me miss God. I want God's presence in my life. Maybe I didn't deliver it like I wanted to. But it's one thing to be identified as a Christian. But then it's another thing to be authenticated by God. And when you get authenticated by him, you can get into the presence of the Lord. Yesterday, I couldn't get into my email. Couldn't get in it. And I was frustrated. And I kept putting in the password. I said, Lord, I know I know my password. Kept putting in the password. And I couldn't get in. And the people of God, I'm here to tell you don't stop. Stay before the presence of God. And although you may feel as though your prayers are just hitting the ceiling, stay on your knees. Stay there. Because after a while, you don't know it, and I don't know it. But God is working in the background. God's working in the background of our lives. And I don't know who I'm talking to today. But you feel as though God is nowhere. Have, let me ask you a question. All of you a question. Have you ever felt like God doesn't love you? I have. I have felt like God does not love me. And the danger, and my pastor has helped me with this. The danger as a preacher and as a believer we got to stop comparing ourselves with others. And just because you may feel like you're going through, it look like everybody else got it together. It look like you're the only one going through. You start feeling bad. You start feeling down. And, and, and I went to a, I ain't going to call the name, but I went to a convention the other week. And, and I saw some folk that I grew up in the church with. Glory to God. And look like all of them had been elevated. And I began to get tearful and I began to get sad. Because I said, Lord, I've been saved as long as they have. And it looked like, I mean, when I tell y'all elevated, they, they suffered bishop and Bishop that suffered and, 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 and they, they, they elevated. And I said, Lord, sometimes you feel that God has forgotten you. And my pastor, I thank God for my pastor because I called him and I shared with him. I said, man, look here, I got to talk to you. I'm feeling really bad, feeling really low. Powerful convention. I mean, powerful convention. And I said, man, I don't understand it. He said, Pastor, I'm sharing this with you in here. He said, your steps are ordered by the Lord. And then he threw in something that took me like this. He said, even your missteps. And I'm here to tell 
somebody, your steps are ordered by the Lord. Even your stumbles, your blunders, your falls, they're ordered by the Lord. And I'm here to tell you today, if you don't remember nothing else I said, I want you to know that God loves you. And he has a purpose for your life. You may not see it, but he's working in the background. Glory to God. God is working in the background. And I'm here to tell somebody today that the Lord loves you. And he has purpose for your life. So many of our young people, young people are walking around, pants hanging down, hat cocked to the side, got a blunt in their mouth, and have no purpose and no direction. But I'm here to tell you, God has purpose for your life. You may not see it. But that the Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. Stop looking at where you are. Stop looking at your circumstances. And know that God is working the will and the do of his good pleasure. I was thinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained with him seeking to rise no more but the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry and from the waters Been sin, let's stand to our feet far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. If you are a believer 
And you can say within your heart, Pastor, I'm a believer. But I don't know if I'm all that authentic. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. I don't know about y'all, but I want God to make me real through and through. Hallelujah. What a word. And now you have an opportunity to make a decision about what you just heard. Those of you who are watching who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, today is your day. God desires to make you a vessel for his glory. I know I need his help and why he is Lord of my life. If you know you need his help and you want him to be Lord of your life, Will you pray this prayer with me? I repent, Father, of all my sins, known and unknown. I'm sorry, Father, for, for the wrong I've done against you. And I confess I need you and want you to be Lord of my life. Forgive me and come into my life and make me new and be my Savior and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to text SAVE to 202-519-9518 and we'll follow up with you. My sister, my brother, welcome to the family of God. We want to share some more information with you, so text us. These are some of the things we have going on at Face to Face Worship Center. Every Tuesday evening at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Join us for our Zoom Bible study. You don't want to miss this interactive time of intuitive study of God's Word. Join us every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for virtual worship on all our social media platforms and in-person worship at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are located at 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. We would love to see your face in the place. Our corporate intercessory prayer is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Join us by dialing our conference line at 319-527-527. 4008. Come pray with us as we pray for the nation, the world, and you. There are several ways you can give here at Face to Face Worship Center. Give Lafay. Look for Face to Face Worship Center. Cash App. Dollar sign F2FWC. Our website at F2FWC.org and click the donate link. Or you can text. F2FWC give to 1-888-364-4483 and give your offering there. All this information should be scrolling across your screen. If you prayed the prayer of salvation with us today, text SAVED to 202-519-9518. And we will contact you to provide more information about how to walk out your new relationship with Jesus Christ. Welcome to the family of God. If you're looking for a church home, join us. We are the place of intimate worship where you can grow both spiritually and socially. For more information, text PARTNER to 202-519-95. And we will send you more information about our ministry. Continue blessings, and we look forward to you worshiping with us again next Sunday.